Welcome back, Morning Trade Live. Joining us, Jeff Kleintop with 10 minutes until the opening bell to give us some perspective on the world and home, of course, Chief Global Investment Strategist to Charles Schwab. Great to have you this morning, Jeff. Good to see you, sir. Thanks for having me on. Always great to be with you. Of course. Uh, all right. So we've got a week in which central banks around the world start to get pretty busy. Seems like the market has already written the history books ahead of time for what happens here the next six months. Uh, how do we kind of reconcile these things, this conviction the market is having right now? Yeah, the market is getting excited about rate cuts next year, but I think it's maybe going a little bit too far to define this year as a year of rate hikes and next year as a year of rate cuts. This week, we hear from the Bank of Australia, Reserve Bank of Australia, we hear from the Bank of Canada, and, uh, and in India as well uh, are, are among the central banks taking place later this week. Probably no changes in rates, but they're going to be talking about their economic forecasts and their commentary about the potential rate hikes in the first half of next year. I think the market's gotten a little excited about the path. I mean, I think they're thinking about this as like a upside down V-shaped uh, move in interest rates. If you take a look at what the market's actually pricing in in the futures market, or if you take a look at what you're hearing from the central banks, it looks very different. It looks something like this. I don't know if you call this like a square root looking path for rates here, but certainly nothing like a dramatic reversal in, in rates over the course of uh, 2024. Something much more steady, uh, I guess higher for longer is something we've heard for a while, but this isn't just about rates. We've got quantitative tightening remaining in place next year in most places, Europe, the US, others. We've also got uh, the impact of all the cumulative rate hikes that we've yet to feel in many parts of the world uh, over the course of the next year. So I think getting maybe a little bit too excited about the flooding return of liquidity to markets next year. And instead, I'm looking for stocks that are maybe less liquidity sensitive that are uh, set to outperform. This is really important. Uh, where do you think the big gap between the market's expectations and what kind of what's been applied out here are coming from, Jeff, does the market have an implicitly more negative economic outlook? Oh, that's the thing. Uh, you'd expect that would have to be the case in order to justify this reversal in rates. I think they just think normal is something closer to zero, uh, that uh, the R prime, that the actual uh, you know balancing rate of, of policy is something much, much lower than it is today. And I don't think that's actually the case. We'll have to see. It's interesting to see what's happening today in the markets. You know, you've got an economy that's very weak this year in Europe, particularly in Germany. German stock index, the DAX today, hitting a new all-time high. In fact, the DAX this year is in line with the S&P 500. They're both up 19 or 20% or so in dollar terms, but the DAX isn't being led by some magnificent seven. It's Siemens and Allianz and Airbus, uh, these stocks that are actually trading at relatively inexpensive price to earnings multiples. And I think that's the key to understanding how this plays out next year. You know, I don't think you wanna be chasing those high PE stocks on the idea that we're gonna get a lot of liquidity from rate cuts driving those stocks any any further. I think it's gonna be a tougher year next year, but those stocks that are braced for that tougher environment without a lot of rate cuts could do better. I think we're seeing that in the DAX today. Okay, so that recent rotation, we've gotten into expensive stuff, liquidity dependent, rate cut sensitive type of names, doesn't sound like it's sustainable in your mind. That's my view. Again, I think next year is going to be tough. We've got an environment where we've already had all of these rate hikes, but we really frankly haven't felt them yet. I'd point out that in Europe, uh, the average household is actually paying less in their interest payments as a share of their income than they were a year ago because, well, they termed out debt, they paid down some debt, but also their incomes rose even faster than interest rates did. That's not going to be the case in 2024. Wage gains are not going to keep pace with the fact that rates are high and they are not coming down at the pace that uh, income growth probably will. So we're going to feel that pinch to household budgets uh, abroad. We're probably going to feel that somewhat in the U.S. as well. It's just going to be a another sluggish year for global economic growth. So you're going to need to find those stocks that are braced for that environment. Again, I find finding more of those overseas. So I guess the logic then that the uh, rate cut camp is arguing is that sluggish growth won't be able to support inflation at current levels. Thus, the interest rates are too tight and restrictive. Do we know um, to what extent the central banks agree with that notion. Have you heard clarity from Powell or Lagarde or anyone else for that matter, Jeff, on their willingness to cut rates with inflation above their targets because in theory there's a real 
uh, yield spread that suggests they are uh, tightening even without hiking? Yeah, obviously real rates are getting much tighter, right? As, as inflation is coming down and they're continuing to keep these policy rates high, they haven't really signaled this yet. I haven't heard much about this yet. We may hear more <clears throat> at the coming meetings about what this is going to look like in, in terms of uh, inflation, not quite at target, yet <clears throat> restrictive policy rates slowing the economy. But look, we've been through a tough year. We've gotten three out of the four quarters of 2023 in recession for Germany, yet not really a budge uh, from the European Central Bank on this. So I think they're gonna remain focused on inflation, remaining the key risk, at least in the first half of next year, keeping rates elevated. Okay, uh, with the Bank of Japan, we haven't really uh, singled them out just yet. Let's go there for a moment because they are somewhat of an outlier expected to hike rates at some point next year. What does the progress there look like on inflation? Today's data is really important. So key to that decision on whether they raise rates or how soon they raise rates next year is the CPI numbers. This morning, we got the Tokyo CPI. Now that's kind of a leading indicator of Japan's overall pricing trends. Comes out a little earlier than the overall CPI in Japan. In fact, this is the last CPI figure the Bank of Japan is gonna see before their next decision on December 19th. Now it fell more than expected, actually plunged to 2.6% from 3.3 in October, and the core numbers came down uh, better than expected as well. Now, we I, I put together this chart, I've shared it on this sh show a few times, of Japan CPI and the PMI and how it's pointing to a further decline. Not only did it point to the decline this morning, uh, not updated on this chart, but down about 2% uh, over the course of, let's say, the, the next uh, month or so, maybe by when we get the uh, December data, uh, we're already gonna be at 2%. So this data may push back a bit against the BOJ tightening monetary policy substantially next year. But interestingly, Japan's 10-year yield dipped a little bit on this, uh, and the yen is actually a little stronger on the news. So the market seemed to have decided that this big undershoot of inflation this morning doesn't move the needle. I don't know about that. In the latest outlook report from the BOJ, they were focused on sort of the longer term outlook for inflation, expecting it to exceed 2%, not just this year, but next year as well. So maybe the yen's looking out well beyond the next several months. But I think this matters to investors because obviously if Japan is raising rates while rates are being cut elsewhere next year, even if only marginally, the yen could surge along with Japanese bond yields, prompting more investors to return their money back to Japanese assets. Okay. All right, so there's a little bit of an exception here to somewhat uh, with Bank of Japan. However, it seems like every time the market gets hawked up about their expectations, they do something a little bit less <laughs> or not quite as extreme. Uh, Jeff, the, lastly, uh, as far as the data go, give us kind of the 60 second explanation of how weak Europe is compared to us because the timeline for those cuts I mean, it's basically, aren't they pricing cuts like the same time we are, but their data are much softer? Like that to me is what's particularly surprising is that the market thinks the Fed is going to be roughly on the same pace as the ECB to reverse. Is that supported by the uh, comparative data? It, it, I would say in a race between the two of them, the European Central Bank has more incentive to cut more quickly, just given the weakness of the economic backdrop and the fact that inflation is actually falling faster in Europe than it is in the US with inflation having come down to 2.6% in the latest reading. This is really interesting to me because uh, you know inflation peaked later in Europe than it did in the US. Those numbers are coming down. The job market is considerably weaker in Europe. We've seen, uh, I think, 10 months in a row now of, of unemployment rise rising in Germany. Uh, we know the central banks very focus, close, focus very closely on employment. You can see this chart here, how the PMI, the orange line there for employment, plunging, suggesting a rollover there in overall European employment. I think if we see that, we could see Europe cutting more swiftly than the US. But again, I don't think they're going to be as aggressive in those rate cuts, maybe earlier, but not necessarily as aggressive as the market is forecasting. Okay, because their inflation is still too high? Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, it's still lingering. The core inflation has still got a three handle on it. So I, I think that's going to extend into the middle of next year. So yeah, rate cuts next year, maybe even beginning early next year, but not as aggressive as the market is anticipating. We're certainly not going to see four or five rate cuts next year, I don't think. Maybe two, possibly three. Okay. All right. Thanks, uh, Jeff. Really good conversation. Good perspective for us. And uh, some of the real deep expectations
for big policy reversal, maybe not quite lining up uh, with what Jeff sees here in the cards. Okay, but uh, step towards it, with the exception of the Bank of Japan.